So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I filmed one of these type of videos where I'm sitting here talking directly to you. But I got a really fun message from Jake this past week and he suggested that I do an Olympics tag because if you've been watching my daily vlogs, you know that I am a huge Olympics fan. So I have donned my best American apparel, with my American flag little shawl left over from 4th of July. And I'm ready to answer some questions about the Olympics. This is also my first time filming in this new location. It is a very rainy day. I was hoping for natural light, so I'm working with what I got. So this is going to be 10 questions about the Olympics. And it's technically a tag, but every time I tag people in videos, no one ever actually does their videos. So I'm opening this up to anyone. If you see this video and you love the Olympics, do this tag and then comment below. Let me know you've done it so I can come and watch your video or tweet me or however you want to contact me because I would love to hear other people talking about their Olympic experiences. So here we go. 10 questions about the Olympics. Also, I'm not actually going to wear this shawl because it's summer and it's too hot to actually wear this, but there you go. Okay, that's better. So, question number one. When and where was the first Olympic Games you watched? I have to do a little research here because I know when, but not where. So, the very first Olympics that I watched was in 1988 because I am old and Apparently, the 1988 Olympics were held in South Korea, in Seoul. And I was only four years old during that Olympics, but I have been told, <laughs> I've been told stories that I was a big fan of Carl Lewis, although I couldn't say his name since I was, I was probably going on four years old since it was the summer. I wasn't four yet. And I couldn't say Carl Lewis, so I think I call him like Carl Lewis. <laughs> I couldn't say my L's. But my parents have told me that I spent the whole Olympics like running through the house pretending to be Carl Lewis. Number two, how many games in total have happened since you are alive? Maybe name them. We're just doing Summer Olympics here. Uh, 1992, well, 1988, 1992, 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, and now 2006, 16. So that's eight different Olympics, which makes sense because I'm going to be 32 this year. But I can do better. So let's see if I can remember the places. Obviously, I just looked up 1988 with Seoul. I don't remember 1992. Was that Spain? I need to look that up. 96 with Atlanta. I'm old enough to remember that one really well. 2000 was Australia, Sydney. 2004 was Athens. 2008 was Beijing. 2012 was London. And now 2016 is. Rio. So now I just have to look up what 92. Barcelona. It was Spain. I was right. So I knew it was Spain. I just didn't know where. It was Barcelona. Number three. Which Olympics was the closest to where you live now? Well, I assume it was Atlanta. I mean, that's the only one that I has been in my lifetime was Atlanta. And at that time I was living in Florida. So it was pretty close. And I was pretty much at the prime of really getting the Olympics at middle school age in 96 and definitely remember all the celebrations that were happening in preparation for it and remember getting a catalog full of all the Olympics gear and the pens and just really getting into it especially in 1996 when I was in Atlanta. Number four, what is your favorite Olympic event? I have multiples. <laughs> I Gymnastics is probably the end-all be-all as far as summer Olympics go but I love swimming, I love diving, I love synchronized swimming, I like watching the equestrian stuff. Um, what else am I missing? I like track and field. I like the cycling. I love the beach volleyball. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be gymnastics, especially the women's gymnastics. That's the one that I get into the most as far as really following them the whole time, learning their backstories, the whole nine yards. Number six, is there a certain moment which is fine tingling to you, a moment which when you watch it again puts a smile on your face and makes you feel proud? This one is easy because like I said, the 1996 Olympics was right at the peak age where I was in the Olympics and actually remember it very well. 
and so I have to go with the Magnificent Seven from 1996, the women's U.S. gymnastics team when they won gold, and of course, that Carrie Strug stick it landing <laughs> that everyone always talks about. I was watching it with my family and my cousins that were visiting from Chicago. We were at the beach condo at Inglewood. We were all watching it together, and just that whole moment when she stuck it, and Bella Caroli came down and carried her off, and carried her the whole nine yards from that night. I just remember every second of it, and I've watched it multiple times since, and it still gives me goosebumps. At that age, I really connected with Dominique Macchiano because she was only, I think, two years older than me at that point. So we were very close in age, and I thought she was great. Really wanted, didn't necessarily want to be her because I've never done gymnastics. I can't even do a cartwheel, so that would not be my sport. But she just had that little firecracker energy and I loved her. So watching that, watching that particular team, and then the Carrie Strug moment, amazing. So number seven, who was your favorite Olympian? Well, I just mentioned Dominique Macchiano, so she was my favorite as far as gymnasts go. I've also mentioned Carl Lewis, who was my favorite when I was a small child, who was of course US track and field. But the Olympian that I've probably followed the most closely over the years is actually Ian Thorpe. So if you are unfamiliar, he was an Australian swimmer and he competed in 2000 and 2004 and was the, was the best swimmer in the world until Michael Phelps came along. And I just fell in love with him during the 2000 Olympics. Thought he was fantastic. I was totally part of the Torpedo fan club. It also helps that I was at high school at that point, so I had a huge crush on him. Thought he was the cutest thing ever. And was so sad when he didn't come back in 2008. And when he tried to come back and failed miserably. It was, it was very sad for me, because I really wanted him to come back and beat Michael Phelps. I said it. There's not a question for this, but just as an addendum to that, up until this particular Olympics, I was not a Michael Phelps fan. I just thought he was cocky and arrogant and didn't like his whole persona. And I know that makes me a bad American because everyone loves him and he's done so much for the sport. But I just did not like his attitude until this particular Olympics. This Olympics, he has won me over. I don't know if it's because he's a father now or he went to rehab or whatever it was, but I felt like he was much more humble this time around and I actually am okay with him now. But for a long time, there was probably some bias against him because of Ian Thorpe, but I was not a false fan. I may have moved slightly because uh, I ran into a room on my camera because I am a pro at this. <laughs> Number eight, what event would you take part in if you could? Well, as I already said, I can't even do a cartwheel. I don't think there's any chance that I'm gonna be doing gymnastics. Realistically, I always thought swimming would be the only event I would have any sort of chance of doing. This is when I was younger and was actually tall for my age because I was 5'2 in sixth grade. Little did I know I would stop growing at 5'4. <laughs> so zero chance of ever being an actual swimmer, but that was the one sport that I was really interested in as a child. I really loved swimming and my grandpa had done high school competitive swimming so he was teaching me a lot of the techniques and how to turn and and mainly freestyle. I didn't learn any of the other ones. But unfortunately, my high school had no sort of something. We didn't have a swimming pool or anything like that. So I didn't actually have any sort of chance of doing swimming. And I was in dance and a bunch of other extracurriculars, but swimming was something I loved. And now I'm, I'm a good swimmer, but I never learned any sort of the competitive swims. But as a child, that was what I saw myself. Like, I could, I could do this, I could do this. Number nine, have you ever been to the Olympics? And no, I have not. I've never had the opportunity to because Atlanta has been the only one in the U.S. since I've been alive. And I've never been out of the U.S. aside from the Bahamas. So there is no, I'm gonna add a little addendum to that. And if I could have gone to any of the Olympics that have happened since I've been alive, I would have picked Athens in 2004. I think it would have been really neat to be back where the Olympics were originally held. And then of course I could have gone to see Ian Thorpe swim and it would have been Amazing. And the last question is number 10. After Tokyo in 2020, where would you like to see the Olympics be held? First of all, I'm very excited for Tokyo. I am a big fan of Japan. Japan is on probably my top five list of places I'd like to go someday. 
I think that Olympics is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see what they do with it. But where would I like to see it go next? I know there's some US cities in contention. I've actually even heard people talking about it coming to Houston because Houston is now the fourth largest city in the US and we're definitely set up where I think we could hold the Olympics, which would be amazing to be able to go to something if it was here. As far as one of my favorite things about the Olympics is seeing the coverage of a place I've never been. So with that in mind, I think I would choose Okay, so I did some major thinking and ignoring all of the political factors that go into hosting the Olympics and all of that because it can get really messy if you think about it too hard. If I was just purely picking on what I would like to see, I would say Rome. Let's go to Italy because it's been a while. I looked up, I went on <laughs> Wikipedia and looked up the actual city. The last time it was in Rome was in 1960 and I think that would be an amazing city. Again, ignoring the politics of how hard it is to actually host the Olympics and how much of a financial burden it can be, just purely on desire, I would love to see an Olympics in Rome and see that kind of coverage. And since Athens was one of my favorites, I think Rome would fit right up there with uh, one of my favorite Olympics. Also, fun fact, just learned something new today, that apparently Rome had been awarded the 1908 Olympics, but after the 1906 eruption of Mount Vesuvius, they had to decline and honors went to London. Who knew? You learn something new every day. All right, so that's it. That's all 10 questions that Jake sent to me. I hope you guys enjoyed something a little different for my channel, but I love the Olympics. I've been talking about it a lot in my daily vlogs that go up on Mondays. And so I figured this fit right in and it's been a while and I've got my cute setup now. It was time for one of these videos. So I'll go ahead and leave the questions down below. If you decide to do this tag, make sure to let me know because I'd love to see what you guys think and what your Olympic experience has been. And if there are other Olympic fanatics that watch my videos, I'd love to hear what you're thinking of Rio and the previous Olympics. I think I've made clear in my regular videos that it's been amazing watching this 2016 Olympics and really loved following Simone Biles and Katie Ledecky and Michael Phelps and looking forward to 2020 once this one's over. So that's gonna be it for this video, but I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. My two different Disney 10Ks. My three Tower of Terror 10 milers, which those medals are just the best. Kind of sad they don't do this race anymore because it was awesome. And then we go into half marathon and challenge territory. So I've got my first half marathon, the one and dine half-ish marathon, and my three other half marathons that I did this past year, plus my two challenge medals.